Oh, all your right. Yeah. <laughs> Great. It's um, so I want to start off with a little bit of mind reading because I, I, I know you're all looking at me now and I've got a feeling I can read your minds. So if you're looking at me and you're thinking, hmm, I bet she was born in Nigeria, adopted by a white missionary couple and grew up in Scunthorpe, you'll be right. <laughs> <laughs> What's the chance of that? <laughs> You'll be bang on the money because I was, I was, I was. Um, and so I, I know I'm very honoured to be working with Social Work England. It's such a big privilege for me to uh, be crashing into their lives and engaging with them as part of the Live by Experience um, team. And also, I work as a comedian. So, oh, that's a round of applause there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just that, just, just naturally applaud. So, can I just say, yes, do feel free, be interactive with me, but please don't heckle me over the next 10 minutes. I'm keeping my time tight. If anybody said anything like, get up and not funny, I will do my hour and a half show. You will lock the doors, you will never leave here. <laughs> so, I'm just laying the right foundation. Okay, so let's just go back to the beginning of my story. Um, I was born into the Biafran War in Nigeria. I had a twin sister, but sadly she died at birth. Um, so miraculously I was found um, by a Save the Children for a Nurse, picked up and taken to a hospital. It's where I joined 50 other babies. And as you all know, um, hospitals are not the right place to, um, to put children. Um, I wasn't sick, well I had pneumonia, but I, I, I needed to be in a, in, a, in a family. And at the same time, my, um, the people who adopted me had been live working out there for um, 13 years. They felt they wanted to help. They went to the hospital and said, what can we do? And they um, just said, look after the baby. So after 50 babies, they handed them me. And then apparently after three weeks, my dad said, I think we need to adopt this child. And so um, as, as you probably all know, everyone in this room, that, and especially if you're a mother or you're a parent or a dad, um, there is obviously a very strong bond between you and your biological parents, but there's also a really incredible bond between a child and an, an adopted child or fostered child. There's a bond. You know, it's like the word for the day is cardionosis. That's what it is. You know, when you look at somebody, you go, I feel we're, we're connected. You know, you can be in a room and you just feel you know someone and you, you feel like you're with them. That's that bond, cardionosis. You just, you just, you, you can't explain it, but you just know we're meant to be friends, even though we only just met. Or do I know you? That's that name. And that bond is so powerful. And so that's how my parents then felt they wanted to adopt me. I came here at the age of two, no paperwork. The government tried to send me back. But my parents, yeah, age two. <laughs> on the plane, like Paddington Bear. Do you know I me? Mean? How's that working out? I mean, madness. So they really fought to keep me in the country, and I'm really honoured to say that. Um, so fast forward a bit more at school, I was born in, but through all the things, all the, all the statistics that you all probably see as social workers, um, I kind of just say, I want to say total respect to every single person in this room, because you are literally changing people's lives. And I just want to say thank you. It's part of our story. And that's why it's so exciting to work in social work England because we can, you know, you know, we've got a clean slate. I joined them in 2018. Dr. Polita Harris very kindly put me in touch with them um, because I know the importance of the work that you do. Um, as a comedian, um, I've got an hour show called Spot the Difference um, because my parents are white. Spot the Difference, um, um, which I've toured with. And I was always getting people coming up to me, social workers, families, potential parents, saying, how do we start our journeys? What can we do? There's so many people out there who want to engage with, with all the work that you do. And it's great now that working with Social Work England, it's, it's enabled me as someone with lived in experience to actually now, we start with a, a clean white sheet. So we can literally engage with you and, and, and work on better outcomes moving forward. We don't, because we all know the same, we do what we always did, we get what we always got. So we have to think differently. Society is changing so rapidly. The political situation is changing so rapidly. We can use this productively to change the future, to rewrite the futures. So the generation behind me won't get all the problems that we had. 
And that's the power of engaging with people with lived in experience. Now, I don't mind admitting, when I first started my political, um, sorry, my political, that's a throwing mistake. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, that could go really badly, it already has. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, but when I first started my advocacy journey back in 2006, I was talking about the Madonna story, and then my own story went viral. And um, it was really, and I'm not going to lie, I was an angry person because I started to realise I suffered so much injustice. Even with a loving family, I suffered so much. So much of the, you know, the stuff on trauma therapy, attachment disorder, all that stuff, I didn't know anything about. I rebelled, you, know, you, you name it, I got in with the wrong crowd. Um, and I became, nearly became that awful statistic that we all know. But like I say, being in that forever family, having people around me made the difference. So when I started that engagement work, um, I was with the British Association of Adoption and Fostering. They asked me to come and start learning about it, start doing speaking engagements with them, sharing my own story. It opened up a whole new wealth of learning. Family. Because that's what life's really about. And that's what gets me up every day. You know, I don't know what happened to my twin sister. I mean, I, I don't know what happened to those other 50 babies. I don't know what happened to so many people that I've lost. I don't know what happened to them, but I do know that I don't want the future, the future generations to be still having this discussion in the next 10 years. So that's what I would inspire you to do. Yes, we know the political scene is what it is, but we all have a great opportunity to work together and to put our differences aside and to really go into the future and, and enjoy the, our differences to make a difference. Thank you very much. Thank you.